Hey everyone, I wanted to show off a little project I've been working on called AphidBot. AphidBot is a fork of an old Gen 7 GTS trading bot called LadyBot, and I've crossed it over with features from a Generation 8 trading bot known as SysBot. Now I know a lot of you probably think that the Gen 7 games are dead, and there's no real use for something like this, and I honestly wouldn't entirely disagree with you. Uh, but over the last few months, a few malicious users have been uploading corrupted GTS deposits to the Generation 7 GTS, um, and if your 3DS console loads one of these deposits, it'll crash your console instantly. Um, Game Freak has failed to push out any type of patch or fix for this issue, rendering the GTS almost entirely unusable to people without a hacked 3DS. Um, because of this, I decided to publicize what I've been working on, and I hope some of you can make use of it. Thanks. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the GitHub, and you want to go to the Release tab, and you want to download whatever the latest release of AphidBot is. Um, once you've done that, you're going to have something like this file here, and you're going to want to open it, and highlight everything, and hit Extract to whatever location you want to send it to, drag and drop it, whatever. I'm not going to do that in this video because I've already done that. Um, and then once you've done that, there's pretty much only two files you really want to pay attention to. That's this config.json file and this uh, giveaway details file. So for the video, I'm going to be messing with this giveaway details template file, but for you, you want to mess with this giveaway details file. Uh, so we're going to edit this in a notepad. And uh, what you need to do is you need to change these locations, um, these file locations to whatever file locations would actually be relevant for, you know, where you, where you downloaded and extracted it to. Um, so in my case, it's going to be this folder right here. So we're going to go here and we're going to highlight up to there probably. Control F. We're going to do a replace, make sure it's on normal, wrap around. Uh, we're going to want to find that and replace with that. Yep. Do replace all. And that'll do 807 for all 807 Pokemon um, in the Gen 7 decks. Um, so, as you can see, that's now you know, been replaced with all of our files. So I'm not going to save that because I'm keeping that file for later. Um, but yeah, it'll end up looking like this. So that's the first step. And then the next thing you need to mess with is this config.json. So what you need to do here is very similar. Um, but you need to point it at these two folders, this dump and distribute folder. Um, it's going to be the exact same thing as the last step, um, but just copy and paste it here. And this time, you know, the backslashes or whatever they need to be doubled because of uh, JSON. And then the only other thing you have to do in this file is this Discord token. Um, so it's going to be blacked out in the video for you, so you won't be able to see it. Um, but that would, you just set up a Discord bot, you know, what well, you'd set up any other Discord bot, copy the token, and uh, paste it in right there. Alright, uh, so now we're going to open up uh, AphidBot and actually go over some of the settings and what you can do with it. Um, so if you're familiar with LadyBot, if you've ever used it in the past, uh, this is built off of it, so you're going to be pretty familiar already. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose a uh, Pokemon to start out with for the bot to start searching on, so I'll just click Charmander for now. Um, then you're going to want to head over to the Settings tab. And uh, you need to make sure that from the front is checked off. It won't work, or at least it won't work as intended if, if it's either of these two other directions. So it needs to be from the front. Um, and then there's these two buttons. There's a uh, trade well idle, um, and idle Pokemon are shiny. So what this does is while the bot is waiting for a request to come in, a custom request to come in from Discord, um, it will just generate Pokemon it sees people are looking for on the GTS and uh, trade them. Um, and this button bu below it is if you want those Pokemon to be shiny or not. Um, this Discord search limit is how many times the bot will try and find a, a trade someone put in on Discord before it gives up and moves on to the next person or goes back to idling. Um, so it's defaulted to 30. 30 is about 5 minutes. Um... If, if the bot isn't idling, um, if the bot is idling and trading people, it can be, you know, upwards of like 20 minutes. Um, so this isn't a, you know, an ideal number. You can tune that for 
whatever you find to work best for yourself. Um, all these other tabs are the same from Ladybot. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll yeah get started and I'll start you know at least show off how the idling function works and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm just putting this video together right now, and I just realized I never went over uh, what you have to do on the 3DS to set up. Um, so it's the same as setting up Ladybot. You need um, boot NTR. You need at least boot NTR 3.6 is the best version for it. Um, and then you need the input redirection CIA. Um, the input redirection built into Luma does not work with this. You need the CIA for input redirection, the CIA for boot NTR 3.6. Um, maybe talk a little bit about what the bot's doing in the back end. Um, so you're going to want to put in the IP of your uh, 3DS. Um, hit connect. And then we'll hit start Discord bot. We'll get this little start a Discord bot. Uh, and we'll start on Charmander. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head over to this dump folder here and sort by uh, date modified right now. So it's going to go and look for Charmanders, and it's going to quit. It's going to exit out. And if you see over here, you'll see two new, you know, folders or files were created. Um, so one of them is going to be this Glacian, and one's going to be whatever the second person is looking for. Um, and it finds the trade, and then it, you know, trades them whatever it is they were looking for. Um, so that's how the idling function works. Um, uh, so I'm going to walk you through putting in a discord request um, and what happens when you put in a, uh, a discord request from the bot point of view. Uh, so if we go to here and we do uh, help, um, you can see uh, an example trade of, you know, how to, how to do one of these requests. Um, if you're familiar with Sysbot and Gen 8, this is the exact same format, it's the exact same showdown format. The only difference is this uh, question mark, question mark D value um, at the bottom here. Um, so what this is, is the bot isn't magic. Uh, the bot doesn't magically know what you're going to deposit on the GTS and know how to go find you and trade you. Um, so you need to tell it what Pokemon you're going to deposit. Um, so in this example, uh, 89 in the Pokedex is Muck. So we're telling the bot, hey, we're going to deposit a Muck. Um, and, uh, you know, like that's what you should look for. And please give me this shiny Pikachu or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to copy all of this and pretend I like pretend I just caught a muck. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. So I'll, you know, give me a Pikachu, make it so it's caught balls, ultra ball, shiny, yada, yada, all that stuff. And I say, I'm going to be depositing, um, a muck. So I'm going to do that and it's going to add me to the queue. It's going to say receiving a uh, Pikachu. And if I look here. Um, it'll go and search for Litten. And then it will back out. Because it realizes there's someone in the GTS queue. And it'll take a second and then it'll go and search for Muck. Yep, so it's gonna start it's gonna start looking for Muck. Um since I'm not I'm not actually gonna be depositing a muck for this example, I'm just, you know, doing it for the video. Um it's gonna be idle trading, but it's gonna be idle trading muck while it waits for me. Um, so this guy's looking for an Entei for his muck. So it's going to be trade him an Entei, you know. Um, so let's go over here. And, um, you know, it says, hey, you've been added to the GTS queue. Deposit a muck nicknamed blah, 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 blah. Um, so the way I recommend people do this is... Actually, I have a, a pin of it here. Um, you know, I recommend you catch a wild Pokemon. Find a wild Pokemon, catch it. Um, hit the nickname button, but before you actually put in a nickname, you find out what the P Pokedex number is, put in your request, and the bot's going to shoot you this code, and you put in the nickname, and then you deposit that Pokemon. Um, you can do it all within like five minutes, it's pretty quick. Um, and the bot will find you, yada yada, it'll trade you, and give you your file back. Um, the reason that... So, a lot of people were complaining about, like, hey, why can't I, you know, why can't I just tell it what my name is? And why can't the bot find me based on the name? Or why can't I tell it my friend code? And why can't the bot, tell, uh, the bot you know, find me based on the friend code? Why do I have to, uh, you know, put in this nickname code? So, th the reason it's set up this way is, say, multiple people are running this bot at the same time. So, say I'm running this bot, 
and say you're running the spot. And then say someone puts in a request at my bot for, I don't know, you know, a Pikachu, whatever, um, and they deposit a muck. And say your bot is idling mucks at that moment. How does your bot know not to trade the person that put in the request at my bot? Um, the, if, if the bot is only looking to trade you based off a name or friend code or something like that, there's no way for your bot to know what was put in on my bot. Um, so, but with this format, with this, you know, code format of, you know, three letters, five numbers, um, the bot can, is smart enough to know, hey, uh, you know, this, this, uh, Pokemon I'm looking at has, you know, three letters and five numbers, and it isn't in my, uh, Discord queue of Pokemon to trade, so I'm not gonna idle to trade it, I'm not gonna make a Pokemon to trade it, this is someone else's Discord Pokemon, and that, that's what they're looking for. Um... Now let me do a queue clear so I stop hogging the queue. Um, but that's how it works. And that's why, since I'm releasing this publicly, it needs to work that way. Yes, I could make it so it matches on name. Yes, I could make it so it matches on friend code, whatever. Um, but that's not sustainable for if you have five, six, you know, a dozen people, whatever, running bots like this all over the GTS. Um, so, yeah, and I just, you know. Skipped out of the queue, so it's going to tell me. Oops, you weren't found in the allowed of time. Skip back. Okay. So, uh, the other example I'm going to show is this right here. Um, so, that code I showed you before, when it sends you something, is eight characters long. It's three letters, five numbers. Um, that's all fine and dandy. You know, you're never going to run into a collision with that, or, you know, you know one in a billion or whatever. Um, one in two billion, actually, like, running into a collision with that. Um, but. <laughs> the uh, the East Asian games, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Korean games, they have a six character limit. Um, so if you're one of those games, what you need to do is you do it the exact same way you do, you know, anything else. But um, any other request, I mean. But before that question mark question mark D value, you're gonna put in these two Korean characters, and there's there's Chinese characters, there's Japanese characters for if that's what the language you're trying to do is. Um, I'll those will be listed in the GitHub or in the YouTube description or whatever. Um, and if you do that, um, it makes it so the characters, the nickname's only six characters long, um, but it makes it so the first character is a, you know, a Korean, or if it's Japanese, it's a Japanese character. Um, in this case, it's Korean, a Korean character, um, and it's the, the same method applies as before, um, to what I was saying, so... Uh, if the bot, if, you know, two different bots are idling and one runs across a nickname that matches this format, you know, of a Korean character followed by five numbers, it's not going to trade that. It's not going to idle trade that Pokemon. You can do, uh, QC, Q clear to get yourself out of the queue. Um, you can do QS to get your status in the queue. Um... Info, SM info, help. Oh, there's one commands. I'll give you a list of commands. Um, you can just do in general. Um, so, the next thing I'll show you, once it removes me from the queue, is. So, I'll just take this .pk7 file here. Um, and if you want to trade a. Dot .pk7, so in SysBot, you would just do, you know, trade or whatever. Um, for this, so I just got removed from the queue, I can see it in the top left there. And this you would do trade file, and then whatever, you know, you're going to deposit, so 200, whatever. Um, and you know, say, hey, you're receiving a Hydreigon, um, please deposit a Mistrevious, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's the, the nickname. And uh, one last thing, if you uh, need any help setting up or using AphidBot, or you just want to come by and use the instance of AphidBot that I have running on my 3DS, uh, make sure to join the Discord. It'll be linked in the description below. Alright, thanks everyone. Bye.